It's a tremendous feeling. It's something that's words are kind of hard to describe the inner emotions that you're experiencing. But only one word can be awesome. It's really awesome. And I say that because I know that blessings come when you dedicate yourself to doing things that can be uh, beneficial to others. And it was not a, an intention of mine to do it before any recognition. But since it turned out that way, it's almost like icing on a cake. But uh, when you got your cake, you got to do something with it. And the children that we were teaching and the young people that we were dealing with, we look at them as the cake, so to speak. And even though I never made it to the uh, contractor's level, I was very instrumental in encouraging them, motivating them, helping others to see that they can, they can reach that goal. Back in 1961, I finished high school at the U.S. Jones High School in Demopolis, Alabama. After finishing high school in 1961, the same year in September, I went down to uh, Tuskegee University, well, it was Tuskegee Institute at the time, but now it's Tuskegee University. I spent five years at Tuskegee learning how to be a brick masonry teacher. And I didn't know that, but after I got out, I found out <laughs> that I had gained some skills and some confidence and I gained a level of, of uh, confidence that I could help others as well. So while I was in school, the instructor was able to allow me to assist other students in building projects and helping them to get things done. So while I was doing that, it created an interest even more in me to move forward and move faster. So after finishing Tuskegee, I went to New York back in the early 66. And after I got to New York, it was hard to find a job in anything else other than in the construction industry. And I was prepared for that. Like I said, that's why I said I didn't, didn't know I was preparing myself, but I did. So when I got to Poughkeepsie, New York, the first job I had was with uh, a group of plumbers. They call themselves Shaker, Travis, and Quinn. And uh, we had to build, uh, they asked me, could I do it? I said, yeah, I'll try. We got to the point where they were installing 8, 10, and 12-inch pipe at Vassar College, which is an all-female school. And they needed some, some way to support those big pipes going in and out. So I stayed with them for a while. And after that, I left, and I think around 60, 68, 69, I went up to Ithaca, New York, because construction across the state of New York was booming. And I got up to Ithaca, and I got a job working around Cornell University with one of the local contractors up there. They had a big uh, student population on Cornell University's campus. And the industry around that town was basically Italian. And uh, that's where I learned uh, even more from the Italian bricklayers. And they taught me a lot of things that uh, were really beneficial to me in my son. So that's what helped me to move forward with the things that I've done. Also, I was able to join in the union. At that time, uh, a lot of guys was not a member of a certified craft, so to speak. And I was able to join in with the uh, corner in New York. They had a brick masonry uh, union over in Corning, and I was able to join in with uh, the Corning because the Italian instructor that was here for me, he was from the Corning area, and he influenced me to get in, and I told him, I said, well, I don't have the money. He said, well, we're going to take $15 out of your check every week until you get it paid, and that's what happened. The youngsters nowadays, uh, they want the money. They don't want to put any work. But you've got to really be willing to take a little bit of hard work. When I say hard work, you've got to learn what to do. When you don't know, things are hard. But when you learn what to do, things become a little bit easier for you to connect with what needs to be done. So I try to encourage young people, even though I'm not teaching anymore, I'm retired, I still encourage them to do their best. Everybody gets tired of doing something at some point. But if you get so tired that you just abandon it, you won't move forward. So I try to encourage them to have a focus on a goal and an idea that they can make themselves some money with.
And I always tell them that if you learn how to lay brick, you always have a dollar in your pocket. So that's one of the things that, uh, that I was always teaching. I still use that philosophy right now. Hopefully, it will be something to say, well, here was a young fella that uh, was determined to see others do well, even though he didn't actually be a big famous contractor himself. But uh, I know a lot of guys, and I'm familiar with a lot of contractors, but that legacy will be something that others could do the same thing as well. It would be something good if they get it, and then if they don't, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You did your best at it.